The impossibles happened. For the first time in recorded history, an entire YouTube comment section was in consensus. You guys were basically unanimous that the Viva New Vegas mod list was the way to go. Now, I could go in detail through all the mods on that list, but the author of the list already did that, and he actually put together a fantastic set of instructions for putting them together. So instead, what I'm going to do is show a side-by-side -side comparison of how the vanilla game handles scene transitions, namely the, the footage from episode one, and I'm going to create that again with the mod list installed. And that's where we are right now. So let's take a look at the memory usage of 240 megs. First thing we're going to do is see what happens when we step outside. Now this is immediately less than where we were at when we started this without the mod, so that's a good sign. Although, it shouldn't be as much of a problem even if it does get high. The next place we went was the Prospector Saloon. Still very low memory usage. It's actually not spiking at all as we move from location to location. So it appear that the game isn't buffering these locations in the same way, well it's definitely not buffering them in the same way that it did under vanilla. This is a very interesting change. Next thing we did was fast travel. Now I did go ahead and take a step into prim. Still sitting at about half a gigabyte. We have two casinos in here to look at, which did a good job in the vanilla... Oh, <laughs> there, you spooked me there, buddy. I had forgotten that I didn't have God Mode on. <laughs> With that location scooped up, we can walk on to the Bison Steve. So it looks like that has uh, added a bit more RAM, although that could be all the people who are, you know, shooting us. Okay, so that raised the usage briefly but we are still sitting at half a gigabyte. Next up is the walk back to Good Springs, because that's what I did in the first video, and I want to keep this as consistent as possible. On the way, a couple things to talk about. The first was DXVK, which is left ambiguous in the Viva New Vegas mod list. So it's mentioned, but it's not explicitly said whether or not you should be using it. Now, I chose to use it because another mod in the list, the New Vegas Tick Fix, has an issue where if you're running at a resolution above HD and you try to alt-tab the game, it will crash. And that's a pretty big issue for me. I can't stand not being able to move in and out of applications at will, so I, I installed DXVK. Unfortunately, if you recall, when I entered Doc Mitchell's house, my frame rate was at best topping eight or nine and that's a bit of a problem <laughs> i mean that's a much much bigger problem than merely not being able to alt tab and it was dxvk when i pulled it it immediately fixed that problem unfortunately i can't alt tab in and out of the game so we're going to leave this as is for now next on the list is the ai nav mesh which is supposed to improve ai pathing around objects now this one is a heck of a lot more difficult to install than the quick little set of instructions on the mod list. I, I did go through it, I do have it installed and running, but given the compatibility issues that are stayed right on the page, things that you have to do every time you install a mod that changes any of the meshes, I think that would be on the list of mods that I'd probably not bother with. Last on the list is the New Vegas Anti-Crash mod, which is actually not on the Viva New Vegas mod list. As such, uh, we'll not be testing it today. Apparently there's a number of other mods that already do most of the functionality of New Vegas Handy Crash. It's not to say you can't use it, it just won't be tested today. Now, next on our list is the Good Springs home we started in. We're sitting a tiny bit higher than we were before. But... No, this looks solid. It seems to be going back to about half a gigabyte pretty consistently. And we also seem to be getting these uh, these mission textures pretty consistently. 
I see these, I remember from Fallout 4, a couple places where you get missing textures like this. It means you can fall through the floor. I'm just seeing if that happens here. No, the ground's there. <laughs> so it certainly appears that this collection of mods is purging the cell buffer at every opportunity it gets. But not only that, the amount of RAM this game is using this time around is less to begin with. Add that to the fact that this is now running the Fallout New Vegas 4 gigabyte patch, which is part of the Viva New Vegas mod list. I don't think we're going to see any problems in terms of memory usage but we started the test let's finish it i will see you at mccarran so we're back at mccarran now the ram usage has gotten up to about 600 megs still way way in the safe zone i'm guessing we're gonna get a purge here and there it is. And even in McCarran, the RAM usage... <laughs> Still getting this, eh? Even in McCarran, the RAM usage is absolutely minimal. I think we're finally going to crest 600 megabytes? Nope, we're not even going to make it to 600 megabytes. Seems that there's an awful lot of recovered sound effects from this area that weren't in the vanilla. They would have been in the code, but somehow got missed from the, the final game. I don't recall how this managed to work uh, last time. Sorry. Nope. See you guys! <laughs> so we've returned to Gamora. I'm going to take a screenshot because that's probably going to be the thumb. If anything can crash New Vegas, it's this place. And I'm guessing... It ain't gonna happen. Hey, no one but Omerita's. Oh, this seems squeaky clean. Although I think we're over 600 megs for the first time. I tell you, not at home is gonna have his day. We're actually back down to just 600. Try the sweets. We're down below 600, and back to the main level. So there's definitely a lot of purging of that cell buffer going on, and it's happening on the fly, it's happening cleanly. I don't think I could do that a dozen times and get it to crash. I think they nailed it. I think this is a stable New Vegas. There is one thing left for me to try, though. So with only a small amount of yelling expletives at my computer, I've managed to come up with a solution to both of the problems I mentioned in this episode. First off, the black textures we were seeing, it's a conflict with the mod Improved Lighting Shaders. So if you're getting the, the black textures when you run this mod list, go ahead and turn that off. As for Tick Fix and the Alt Tab, if you're willing to run it in borderless windowed, which you're going to lose a couple frames per second, but not substantial. You can still alt tab it. Now the game is going to fight you on this. It's more steps than it sounds like, but rather than put it in the video, uh, I know I would rather just have a set of instructions. So I'm just going to put it in the description of the video how to fix that. But what that means is you can have your cake and eat it too. You can have all the stability of the Viva New Vegas mod and still be able to alt tab to watch my next video. And I will see you then.